Hi there, I'm Tim Wong with NVIDIA. We're here at CES 2018 in the NVIDIA booth. As you can see behind me, we have the beautiful Robo Race car. So Robo Race is a Formula E uh, electric uh, race. Uh, they, they believe they're going to start racing this year. What's cool about these cars is that, as you can see, there's no room for a driver. Uh, it is a fully autonomous race, meaning that there are 20 cars, they're all identical. Same brakes, same uh, power plant, same battery, and even the, uh, the Drive PX2s, there are two of them. It has a whole bunch of sensors, 15 ultrasonic sensors, five LiDARs, two radars, um, I believe eight cameras. Um, and what really makes it challenging is the only difference that these teams can do is basically the software that runs on Drive PX2. So it is an algorithm race. And so it's kind of cool to see the car up close. I can see the big brakes. I can see and you know how low the car is. Uh, they go about 200 miles an hour. So pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but what we're showing in the rest of the booth is, you know, NVIDIA has a dominant position in AI for self-driving cars. And we, we wanted to kind of educate the world in all the different things that we provide our customers in developing a self-driving car. Uh, one of the newest things we showed is simulation. So as you know, when you test a self-driving car, if you're limited to just miles on the road, then you know, you're limited by your fleet, by your drivers. And, and the problem there is that that's not a lot of testing. So we took our DGX1, which is our big supercomputer, and we've basically been able to take our drive stack, you know, whether it's the CV algorithms, whether it's perception, sensor data, and we're basically able to bring that into a virtual world, into software, and now I'm able to test in simulation. And I'm able to keep that correlated reality so I can actually use that data and be confident that if I see something wrong in simulation, it would be the same thing in reality. Well, what's beautiful about this is that now we can test 60,000 miles of driving in one hour. Uh, so imagine, not only you can do that, but I can do different weather conditions, I can put you know, some potholes in the road, I can have a little kid running across the road, whereas I'm probably not going to be very popular if I hire a five-year-old, have them run across the road and try to hit them. Um, so now I can do this in sim, and I'd be confident that the car is going to react uh, properly and correctly. So this is a huge thing for not only the automakers, but in regulatory agencies. You know, the governments have the challenge of how do I certify that a level five car, an autonomous car, is safe enough to put on the road. Um, I think with simulation now, being able to sim not only the car itself and its algorithms, but I need to be able to sim radar sensors, LIDAR sensors, cameras, um, IR cameras, ultrasonic sensors, you know, pretty much anything someone can put in the car, we have to be able to sim it and then keep that correlated reality. And then I can have reproducible testing scenarios because that's the other problem is that when I do physical testing, all it takes is the cloud going across the sun or wind blowing and all the test conditions just change. So the whole point is that I can now have a reproducible test platform. I can basically have my developers have these tools and develop very safe autonomous cars. In addition, we actually are showing some other videos of we had our New Jersey team uh, basically use our own product. That we have a development platform for autonomous driving. It has a full drive stack where I've got uh, modules, open modules that uh, sensor perception, sensor correlation, sensor fusion, localization, path planning, um, networks, uh, neural networks that basically tell me uh, where the lanes are, where the objects are, where um, the open uh, road, basically the free space around the car that's safe to drive. Um, we have all these modules and we charged our New Jersey team, go ahead and use all of it, put it in the tunnel's car and see what you can do. So there's a, a video that we're showing that they did an eight mile drive, very complex. I think they went through 30 plus intersections, uh, two stop signs, left turns, uh, across traffic, and it did a great job of making sure you know cars were taking their turns going, and then when it was our turn, we went. And so it was a great testimonial that you know our stuff works, that it's a great platform to build on top of, and you know this was autonomous driving uh, in New Jersey, and it was fun to watch. In addition, we had. Um, our Drive IX platform, Intelligent Experience. So this is basically where if you are driving but it's an autonomous car, the autonomous systems are still running, the sensors are still running, and so why not have the car be a safety net for you? So if the car sees that, you know, say, say someone's about to run a red light, and you, you may not know that that's about to happen, but the car certainly does because it's tracking everything around the car and it's paying attention all the time. So it will actually stop you from entering the intersection because it knows if you do, you're going to collide with that car. 
Um, or even simpler things, bicyclists coming down uh, the car you're about to get out rather than you knocking the bicyclist over, it's gonna basically give you a nice loud warning when you try to open the door because the bicyclist is right there. Um, but even little things like if I have a driver monitoring camera, I can monitor the state of the driver. Sleepy driver, distracted driver. You know, for better or worse, humans aren't the best at paying attention all the time. Whereas the car, whether it's in autonomous mode or it's not in autonomous mode, it's still paying attention all the time. And so we wanted to bring that functionality to the driver, be able to have them use it as a safety net and as a very intelligent assistant. Um, in addition, we have Drive AR. So Drive AR uh, stands for augmented reality, but it's really core technology for the human machine interface that you are gonna have, whether it is uh, pre-tensioning the seat belt, vibrating the steering wheel, a heads-up display, um, augmented reality display, um, you're having a constant communication between the car and you. Natural language recognition like what you see in Alexa and Google Home. You know, all that are tools that we provide to customers so they can basically decide how they want to do it. And we decided to make it a little fun. So the demo we're showing here is that we decided to try out this UI in VR. Because you know, VR is a great tool that, uh, it's actually a really beautiful Ferrari, but we decided to change the dashboard display, put some augmented reality on there. We actually uh, took the rear view mirror, uh, gave it a whole lot more than you actually see. If you ever look out the back of Ferrari, the, I think the rear window is pretty tiny, so you don't see very much. So we decided since we have a rear camera back there, we can give you a very uh, wide look of what's back there, and then we can actually highlight things. A motorcycle's about to pass us, let's highlight it in red so you, you're not surprised by it when it happens. So that's Drive AR, which is basically a communications platform that we uh, give as building blocks so they can basically decide how they want to do it later. Um, lastly, we are showing off our reference design boards that we have Drive Xavier is a new chip that uh, we got back in December and then we brought it up and we actually have it working on our two boards.